So joining us on the show this week is a guy that may not be familiar to a lot of you, but uh, one of which that I've been following for quite a while, uh, David Stanley of 3D Printing Bagpipes. How are you, David? Are you well? I'm doing well, sir. Thank you for having me. Not at all. Well, first of all, for folk who don't know you and all the rest, do you want to give us a bit of a background, first of all, in how you got started out in the piping scene? Sure, sure. Um, I started back actually back in uh, 1996 uh, when I was uh, just before my 16th birthday in Florida, in Sarasota, Florida, which is um, uh, there's a pretty heavy Scottish community down there. And I, I got involved with the Caledonian Society and got hooked up with the, the club piper, Charlie Murray. Who, uh, mm-hmm. by the time I met him, had been playing for 50 years and had his hands operated on three times. Mm-hmm. So uh, he couldn't quite play the embellishments very well on his own, but he could teach him very well. He's a phenomenal teacher. And uh, he brought me up to about grade five. And then um, from there, I was fortunate enough to run into Jimmy Bell, who actually played in a band with Charlie. He ran the band. And Jimmy Bell, I went to his house on Saturdays and he brought me up to about grade one. And uh, I don't play there now. <laughs> I am so out of practice, but. Um, but yeah, and it's just been a, a wonderful journey. I played all over the world with them and, uh, excellent. Yeah. Incredible, so incredible. You have pretty much a wealth of experience then from playing on the lower grades all the way up to the top flight. So yeah, well yes. experienced in the piping scene. So the yeah. reason we have you on the podcast is, well, you have, you've been working on quite an interesting idea of 3d printing bagpipes. Tell us how this got started, David. Strangely, um, it started from uh, not having an instrument. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> right. I, it was it was the spring of uh, spring of twenty one, mm. um, and I didn't I didn't have an instrument. I had I was I was working a lot of hours doing it as a retirement planner. Um, great money, but just really dry, a real grind, mm. but a really good money. You help a lot of people, and that that's a really good aspect of it. But I didn't have an instrument. I had a three D printer. I've been kind of been tinkering with, and I thought, you know. I've been making everything under the sun. There's no reason why I can't try and make bagpipes. And I, I found some basic files on the internet and started there. And, and, and it took about, it took about two weeks to finish them. Um, Mm. And literally, I mean, they, they were semi playable. And then I just, over the past year and a half, I've made about 1800 changes to those files. And wow. uh, that's quite awesome. a bit yeah, then. I, yeah. I, I'm not exaggerating either. That's like I've kept track. It's about 1,800 changes, and they are mm. they're most are most are repeatability, you know, and and consistency. Mm. Uh, but they sound really good and they are uh, very, very light. And you know, I just I wanted to be able to provide something. There's there's a vacuum in in bagpiping from practice chanter to basically Stradivarius. You know what I mean? There's really nothing in between um that's playable. Pakistani bagpipes don't count as playable. So I don't include that in, in the equation, but you know, there, uh, there's just really nothing there. The cheapest set of pipes that I could find, excuse me, least expensive, cheap implies low quality are, um, acetyl pipes that were about 900 bucks. And, uh, you know, they're solid pipes worth every penny. Bagpipes are, are, are incredible instruments that can be worth. I mean, look how old some of the instruments are. These, these folks are playing. Yeah. You know, they're absolutely worth every penny, but not everybody's got the kind of bankroll. Um, and I wanted to provide something that, that was able to fill that gap. I'm not trying to compete with McCallum or the, the heirloom, you know, the, the legacy makers, those are McCallum or Shepard or Henderson or, or McClellan or any of these guys, those guys, those pipes are, are worth every penny. Um, I'm trying to muscle out the Pakistani bagpipe makers a little bit and, uh, <laughs> and provide something for people who want to play something foul with it. Look, if you take your antique set of lorries out in a rainy parade, you need to have them wrapped gently around your head for being for doing something so stupid. I think. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. oh, percent. So many stories of uh, people who play their antique set of pipes in in Clement weather, and then the stocks crack on them, or they break a drone, or so many horror stories. So uh, yeah, That's so terrible. these. I'm so glad you mentioned pipes from Pakistan. That because I had a look at your website. I'll just actually bring it up for those of you watching the video right now. Uh, we're looking at 3dprintedbagpipes.com. So this yeah, it's Ralph there. This is your website here. And um, we have a video of a fellow playing a set of them, and we will hear that later in the show. Um, but you do mention about bagpipes bought on Amazon and bagpipes yeah. bought on eBay. Now we've yeah, seen <laughs> Oh, we have seen some of the horrific videos <laughs> that you can find on YouTube and stuff of folks trying these out and mate, they're horrible, you know, yeah. Yeah, and 
unfortunately for those who are new to the piping scene, they'll go, oh, I want to buy a set of bagpipes. Where do I go? I'll go to Amazon. I buy everything there. And they mm. end up buying complete trash, you know? Yeah. So it's is that is that really where you kind of fell into this market? Then you're, you know, like pushing out those Amazon and eBay guys, you know, you're uh, pushing these. Uh, out. You know, it, it's just, a, it's by pure happenstance that I've kind of fit in like a puzzle piece. And I, I you know, I don't want to sound conceited, but it's just, this is apparently the market's very hungry for this exact thing. You know, something that mm. sounds good, that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. That's, you know, if, if you're out on a drunken St. Patrick's day parade or evening, you know, you're not going to, it's not going to break your heart if somebody sits on your bass drum or something, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think, I think it's a, it's just a market. It's just a, a, a segment of the market. that has been very, very dry and very, people are very thirsty for it. Mm. That's it's, it. So, I have to admit, now I'm going to put myself completely out there. I was very skeptical. Now, I've already listened to these. I've, I've heard what they sound like. Our listeners were here a lot in a wee second or two. Uh, but uh, whenever I first heard 3D printed pipes, nah, come on, how good can they be? And I thought, <laughs> you know, I thought but looking at like various 3D printed stuff in the past, it's all been really brittle. It's like really small even and like really fragile and especially those who have tried to 3d print and pipes in the past it's been pretty unsuccessful they just sound mm. very thin there's just no big tone there is yeah. that something obviously with your experience in the piping scene you knew what you were after <clears throat> david i did i knew what sound i wanted and uh, of course you know i have a i've been fortunate to have a really 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 gifted piping pedigree the people that taught me um mm. Uh, are just just phenomenal. I mean, I've never heard a, a man treat a set of bagpipes and get him to sing the way Jimmy Bell does. I mean, it's just it's just insane. And I'm sure that you know, and that's that's just my experience. He's like the only one that I have reference access to. Heard Roddy McDonald band all together. Remember him? I, I heard him play. He taught me how to tie in bags back in '96, uh, in between smoking cigarettes. Um, but uh, yeah, but like I I just knew what knew what the sound was supposed to be, and worked real hard on getting it there. And uh, there you go. Uh, you know, Perfect. I, so I, I think at this point, then we can't go any further in the conversation without actually hearing them. So for those you know, watching the video and listening to the pod, shall we play a little clip of it now? Yeah, I just want to say real quick, um, there's a, there's another clip, clip on my website where, I mean, this is Ralph. He's a way better player than I am right now. <laughs> uh, Ralph, I owe a lot of, I owe a huge debt of gratitude to, as well as a couple other guys, Kent Brody, Kent Adler, Jimmy Bell, all these guys helped me to develop them and develop the brand. But Hmm. Um, <clears throat> Ralph's pipes th that's actually how you and I got hooked up was you saw the orange and blue bagpipes you're like what the heck is this yeah exactly yeah <laughs> now, there's a there's another there's another clip on my website um, where I've got this my cell phone taped to the ceiling and it's mm -hmm. me playing so you can hear the drones a little better um, I'll send you a link while we're listening to that if you want oh but I've seen that on the website too so at that oh, yeah, okay. that'll work in perfect so we'll play a little perfect. clip of the pipes here now just for folk to have a listen Beautiful. <laughs> So, David, I have to be honest, whenever I listened to that clip, I was pleasantly surprised. I hope you don't mind me saying that, uh, because 
yeah, and whenever I first heard, well, 3D printed pipes, nah, you know, how good can they be? But honestly, man, I was pleasantly surprised to hear that tone coming from them. Yeah, I, so, uh, so was I, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Incredible. these obviously are aimed at the market, even for folks who are making that transition from practice chanter onto pipes. Like these would really suit school kids in that really well. And that's, that's I mean, you've highlighted beautifully the the use case um the big one like let's you know you're a middle school kid or you know you're you're a parent of a middle school kid middle school kids learning the pipes mom mm. and dad teacher says i'm ready to graduate to the big instrument okay well where do we get a big instrument uh we can go to you know this website here and get them and they're fourteen hundred dollars or thirteen hundred dollars yeah. i don't know how much <laughs> really comes. and that's that's a mortgage payment right that and that's is. something that, that's mm. something to not to take lightly and and then of course kid, kid gets on to high school and you know, everybody starts poking fun at him. And now in America, that might be more of an issue than Scotland. Uh, mm, but yeah. uh, kids start poking fun of him for doing it. And he, he loses interest in, or she loses interest in drops of pipes. Well, the parents have just spent a small fortune on a fad. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So we've established that they're definitely a budget set of pipes, but we haven't got a budget tone is the big thing I'm noticing here. So but what I'm hearing is that these would be a perfect starter for people who are just making that transition onto the instrument. Then mm -hmm. once they get to grips with things, then, hey, if the budget's there, then brilliant. Then go for your yeah. Wallace, your, you know, whoever, and, yeah. you know, purchase those nice set. You know what I mean? Yeah, the heirloom set. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So these yeah. would be what we would affectionately call as a, a set of beater pipes. You kind of your workhorse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you would yeah. do gigs and parades and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the very first guy uh, to ever buy a set of my pipes, Jim Nesbitt, a uh, good friend of mine. He's uh, He writes tunes for some of the big bands. Um, phenomenal composer. Uh, Jim actually bought my very first set of bagpipes I sold, and he took them immediately. Uh, and he was a uh, prime major of Rosier Brady. Uh, band in orlando florida at the time mm. and he took them out for their st patrick's day what the heck did he call it st patrick's day torture marathon or something like that it's two solid days of mm -hmm. playing gigs like 16 total hours of gigs and wow. just beat the heck out of them and he said they did great and now mm. he's telling me um his exact words are they're about to become my primary instrument he's got a, a old antique set of ivory and silver pipes he's gonna get hooked up with one of the the players in a good band you know mm -hmm. that that's worthy of it He's going to make my pipes his primary instrument. So I'm tickled Fantastic. pink. Fantastic. Hey, I that's him, smashing. <laughs> yeah, I, I told him, I said, Jim, you having faith in me and buying my first set of pipes, you get lifetime firmware updates, man. So anytime I make a change, you get a new set of pipes. There you are. That's not bad. All right. Yeah. I want to have a look at the website here now. For, so for folks listening at home or watching the video right now, go to 3dprintedbagpipes.com. It's kind of self-explanatory. There you go. Uh, but I want to delve into the shop because this was another shock that I got, and you mentioned this earlier, was the price of them. Now, mm. we're talking for a set of, uh, well, you saw them as sticks and stocks here, basically, uh, mm. $305, which is basically 260 quid UK, I guess. Yeah, That's nothing, you know? Yeah, it's, uh... it's very, very reasonable. And then even you can get a full set of pipes here, all set up with a bag and a set of reeds and all hemped up and all the rest. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, th th these honestly, price wise, very surprising. And uh, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I just want to wish you the best of luck with it. I think it's a fantastic gap in the market for you to kind of slot in there and help a lot oh, of people. I love it. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful to my, I have the best customers in the world. These people are amazing. I have, I have one of my customers is sending me some of his homemade hot sauce. I mean, how cool is that? You know, <laughs> but the, my, my, my uh, shop is a little light at the moment. I've got a couple of new, a uh, couple of new designs that I'm surprising folks with here in a couple of days. Oh. Um, I think you're going to be, I think going to be a big hit. I've also got a set of button mount pipes that are even, even least, even less expensive than my military pattern Delta pipes. I see. Um, so they're, they're, they're coming in about, uh, 219, I think, for a set of in US ah, dollars. For a set of six socks. Yeah. And do you know something? I know the, the video on the front page of your website has a guy playing a set of these like bright blue, like really out there set of pipes, but you can go with the standard black, you know, the, the regular, mm -hmm. like they almost look like African black, but you know. So, yeah. Yeah. You yeah, can't a have a traditional black, black that. PLA that I'm using that uh, looks very, very much like African blackwood. <laughs> There you go. So, David, I have to say the future is bright, honestly, for such a smashing idea. Um, so can I ask them, what does the future hold for yourselves then? Uh, any plans for expanding and possibly oh, more definitely. products? Or 
Yeah. I have, this is, the, this thing is already blown up beyond what I thought it ever would. And I am, <laughs> I'm just, just overcome with gratitude every morning I wake up. I'm like, this is really happening. And then I go in, I, and, and you know, 3d printing, 3d printing is definitely a tinkerer's hobby. Believe me, there's, I go in, I fight with my 3d printer for an hour and a half and then, then they start, then they start working. So I'm sort of, it's like a British sports car, you know, when it's running, it's, it, there's nothing like it, but when it's not running, there's nothing like it, you know? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. You just want to but, throw uh, yeah. it against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> definitely want to expand it and get as big as I can get it to be. Oh, that fantastic it, stuff. Out there, yeah. Well, man, keep us across this. Honestly, I'm a huge fan. I think it's a fantastic venture. And uh, it's awesome, Rabbit. Hey, you. you never know. I might have to pick myself up a set of these and try them. Yeah. Who knows? There might be a set already on the way. You don't even know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there could be a video one coming of me struggling trying to, trying to set up a set of pipe. Hey, hey, there you go. But I dare say there'll be no struggle. Absolutely. So, so, David, thanks so much for taking time to chat with us on the show, man. And again, for folks interested, um, perhaps you're watching the video at home, uh, go and check out the website right now, which is 3dprintedbagpipes.com. Such yeah. a fantastic idea. And uh, hey, thank uh, you so much, Rab, for having me, man. Really stages, man. The future is bright. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>